we have Shinpei Tsai <laughs> from Uber, who's you know, their global head of policy, cities and sustainability, obviously all sort of yeah, very important things that we care about. So basically, how do we move people and goods in a you know, more responsible, safer, cleaner manner? And joining her, there's going to be Lauren Sweeney, who's head of Deliver Zero, which is this very cool, sustainable, reasonable packaging startup for food delivery. And then Chef Richard Rea from Butcher's Daughter. And nice. anyone who's ever been to Butcher's Daughter knows they make some delicious veggie-friendly cuisine. So it's kind of this broad yeah. conversation about how do we make delivery more sustainable on every side of the components. Jonah, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. You know, just a couple of weeks out, it's crunch time. Yeah, it's exciting. But yet here we are taking the time to record a lovely podcast and interview with each other all about the upcoming Curbivore Conference. Yeah, the viewers always come first. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you know, I thought it'd be fun to talk a little bit about the, you know, today, you know, talk a little bit about the logistics and details of this year's event, because we've got some pretty cool and exciting and even just different changes, maybe do a little preview of some of the panels and speakers and then highlight a couple cool new companies, couple things that you are looking forward to something I'm looking forward to. And, you know, we won't take up people's too much of people's time, but just kind of give a little teaser preview and sort of what we're excited for at the event. Yeah, I think this is a time-honored tradition, right? Like we bring people behind the scenes with us, you know, yeah. kind of open up. How do you put on a conference? So I think I think people like it. And it's really just the two of us. So we're really <laughs> the only people that, you know, sort of know the inner workings. Although shout out to Christy. And I guess, you know, we've got some other folks that we'll, ha that we'll hire to help with the actual logistics and day of event. But planning wise, just me and mainly you. <laughs> <laughs> So I think the, what do you think is the biggest change this year, like kind of logistics wise of the conference in your mind? Yeah, I think people are really going to be in for a treat when they come to the site this year. So yeah, people that have been before, they know every year we've moved it around a little bit. We built a different little curb city. This year it's in the arts district. So anyone familiar with LA now, it's like a really fun, exciting part of downtown. It's yeah. lively, it's gritty, it's warehousey, it's got a lot of you know, streets and curves. It's pretty all hip, to be honest. Boy. I think this is our hippest location by far. It's right near, what, 7th Street, where all the bars and restaurants. And, you know, my favorite restaurant in all of Los Angeles, Bestia, is just around the corner. So make your, probably too late, might even be too late to make a reservation, but try to get a table <laughs> there if you can. Wait in line for a table if you can. And and I think, yeah, it's got that grit, but in a kind of cool way. And I think we're really going to yeah. play into that, right? We have like, this year, there's like a warehouse that we're working in the build out. So I don't want to reveal too much because the surprise is more fun. But is it? Well, I don't want to undersell it. I want to sort of, you know, right, I think right. it's Sell funny. It. People it. think go, that go. the, you know, I know we got a few emails sometimes, especially from partners or people last year, last couple of years, they say, oh, you know, we typed in the address and it's a parking lot. I said, don't worry. We're going to build the whole venue from the ground up. There's going to be a stage. There's going to be security, everything. And so I think that's what's pretty cool and unique about the event that it's literally on, you know, this year we have a 20, I think 20. 5,000 square foot parking lot. And, you know, where I'll kind of give you, I would say all or most of the credit is that you found this nearby and luckily it is about a 100 foot walk nearby a venue. And so that's where we're going to be having the stage. So it's going to be indoor, good sound, protected from all the elements. And uh, yeah, so it'd be kind of cool that we'll have sort of a more formal stage and reception area. And then just a hundred feet away, we'll have our sort of normal large parking lot area. Yeah. And thank you to our, our partners at Air Garage providing a very cool parking lot. I think definitely it's, it's got, yeah, no, I'm got excited. a cool little like wall going on. Again, Arts District, there's got to be some graffiti, yeah. some street art. So yeah, it really all. did work out well partnering with Air Garage this year. So big shout out to the team. I'm excited to uh, work with them this year because the lot is just in a great location. It's right on the corner and honestly, a pretty dang good part of the Arts District. Uh, you know, not too downtown LA ish, but you know, sort of like in a good spot that's hip and accessible and all that. So I think, yeah, definitely. Definitely the new venue is going to be cool. I mean, it seems like every year, I guess every year we've changed the venue, huh? We make it hard on ourselves to make it fun <laughs> for our attendees. <laughs> but but we'll see. The other we'll thing that we changed this year, right, is as we pushed it back a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. I don't know if anyone actually noticed or said anything, but we, I guess our conference would have been, you know, when we're recording, it would have been in maybe two days. Right. And we're out, we're here right now looking at rain. Been, so I think it would have been like, yeah, like today or something. It would have been good weather. <laughs> it, I guess it would have been good weather most likely, but 
you know, I think one of the main reasons why we wanted to push it a little is just to get away from El Nino and any kind of lingering uh, storms. And so hopefully by the end of March, nice and clear and dry. And I did look at the weather for next week. It looks like it's going to top 80 degrees and sunny. So that's sort of what Ooh. we've always wanted to sell, right? <laughs> yeah, it's something for the Canadian visitors. Um, and then I think, yeah, anyone that follows you and I too closely on Twitter knows we're both amateur weather people. Mm. yeah <laughs> so yeah we, we i think better odds of warmer weather in late march and then another advantage to having a, a warehouse for the actual main stage is you know in the past couple of years it's gotten a little chilly around 4 p.m <laughs> yeah solve that problem yeah we won't have to worry as much about heat lamps and checking the weather and all that but uh, hopefully it'll be good weather good people i mean i've been kind of sharing this on twitter socials lately and i don't know if people think i'm you know just hyping up the event but we are actually 30 percent ahead ticket sales wise where we were last year and so that is a real number i didn't make it up and you know we get a lot of registrations in the last month so i'm excited to see you know i think last year we had close to a thousand registered attendees and so i think we'll be at or above that number uh, this year also yeah, the whole world of the curbs coming, baby. Yeah, awesome. Well, that's sort of the main logistics and details. And obviously, if people are curious about uh, all of that, they can go to curbivore.co, the website where they can see the program and the panels and the partners and, you know, event details and timing and all that. We'll be updating that over the next, you know, few days. So logistics wise, I think we kind of covered everything there. And now sort of on to the fun part. Well, actually, I don't know. What is your favorite part of the conference? Is it more the panels and the programming? Is it more the partners and the companies and the exhibit? or what do you kind of personally enjoy most at any conference or, you know, ours specifically? I think the one, the one thing that honestly is the most fun is like the opening reception, the closing reception, like the networking opportunities, mm. the eating, the, oh, the parties. And so yeah, the parties. <laughs> and so I just well, want to, I feel like given. we have to call it out because people have been asking like, so oh, I think this year we, we, do have some we, cool have, parties. we have a Thursday opening reception. Thank you to our friends at Curb IQ for that. And so, yeah, people get here early, you know, get ready to to eat and drink and meet and talk. Yeah, we've got um, a really cool venue for that Thursday night. Are we revealing it yet or people have to wait and find out? Let's let's give them something to wait for. But it's, clearly it's, we it's didn't you know, discuss all this ahead of time. So <laughs> <laughs> we do it live. Um, do it live. And it is a cool venue. It's very Maybe cool. I'll... It's it's very curvy. It's It's got, you know, I mean, it, it let me it tease, let me yeah. tease a hint a little bit. There will be a mobility component for sure at the Thursday night venue, right? And there are also a couple, I'll call it retail opportunities, but retail, <laughs> you know, sort of happenings going on at this venue. In addition to obviously, you know, kind of drinks and food and all that. So it's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited for that Thursday night. It's just a few blocks away from the venue. Uh, so everyone who's setting up can kind of meander on over and we'll have a fun opening. And then, yeah, uh, after the party or after the conference on Friday, March 29th, we'll also have a cool little reception uh, in the patio of our warehouse venue, right? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, uh, a lot of different rooms to explore this year. Yeah, no, I, I think that'll be cool. It's a cool little area too. It's on site and we'll we'll make that fun. So, okay, so we knocked out. All right, so I completely forgot about the parties. And yeah, that is my favorite <laughs> part about every conference and event. So we're locked down there. I think what about, let's tease or talk a little bit about the panels and programming. Because I know this is one area where, you know, we typically bring some really good speakers, public sector restaurant and retail, platform technology, you know, investors, you know, we've had some good names over the years. So we've sort of set the bar high here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think we can, we can start at the beginning as you often do. So kicking the day off, we have LA's deputy mayor, Randall Winston. And, you know, he's the person that basically is in charge of infrastructure in this town. So I think super relevant for this, you know, looking yeah. at streets, transportation, basically the things that we need for mobility and delivery. So I think it's, we're going to hear a lot from him. Yeah, I'm actually um, excited to hear from him because I, I feel like it's kind of a cool welcome to the conference, welcome to L.A. sort of speech. You know, I guess we're both grew up in L.A. and we both live here now. So we always kind of try to, you know, incorporate these L.A. elements, right? Whether it's our fruit guy, you know, fruit cart guy, the taco vendors when it comes to food or, of course, on the actual programming side, you know, people from the city of L.A. Obviously, we'll have people from all over. But, you know, just there's like little hints of that here and there. And I think the other thing that at least like I'm kind of geeking out about is for those that aren't watching the municipal elections that closely, Measure HLA just passed here. Yeah. 
And I think like there wasn't going to be a clear consensus if it was going to pass or fail. So he's probably updating the speech right now to talk about all the new mobility. Yeah, no, and I think it overwhelmingly passed with a two thirds, which in, I don't know anything about politics, but I know when things pass by two thirds, that's like a, a, you know, a a very good sign. They just elected you to be dictator, basically. Yeah, Yeah, (laughs) on the the yes side, it's probably very happy. And we've, you know, congrats to Streets for All and Michael Schneider. We've had them as a partner the past couple of years, and they always come with a pretty strong entendre of folks from the sort of Streets for All community. So that was cool to see. And, you know, we won't go through every single panel, but maybe we'll highlight just a couple here. I'll let you start off with maybe this opening panel here. Uh, I know this is going to be one of our favorites for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I'm, I'm looking forward to this not just because I'm leading the conversation, but we have Shinpei (laughs) Tsai from Uber, who's their global head of policy, cities and sustainability, obviously all sort of very important things that we care about. So basically, how do we we move people and goods in a more responsible, safer, cleaner manner? And joining her, there's going to be Lauren Sweeney, who's head of Deliver Zero, which is this very cool, sustainable, reasonable packaging startup for food delivery. And then Chef Richard Rea from Butcher's Daughter. And nice. anyone who's ever been to Butcher's Daughter knows they make some delicious veggie-friendly cuisine. So it's kind of this broad yeah. conversation about how do we make delivery more sustainable on every side of the components? Like, you know, not, yeah. not just how it's moved, not just how it's made, not just how the consumer has it, but collectively. Yeah. And I think we might be even making an announcement on stage for that one. So that'll be pretty cool. And I actually really like this panel because I feel like it encompasses a few different verticals or categories like herbivore is sort of all about right the curb and everyone that cares about the curb and that's like anyone and everyone right and i think one of the (laughs) challenges we've had in the past is like oh you know this isn't a conference just about delivery it's about delivery it's about sustainability right it's about the people that power the delivery it's about the chefs right and so you know kind of it's it creates more challenge it creates some challenges sometimes you know getting all those different groups but then when we put a panel like this together i think it's super cool to have a chef who you know is literally out there like cooking the food doing the food and then a partner, you know, kind of of that restaurant, right, in Deliver Zero, right, like, you know, running a restaurant, you've got the sort of, you know, actual cooking part, right, like the chef being a chef part, right, you've got the like, being a boss part, you know, managing your workers, your labor, and then you've got, you know, suppliers and partners, right, and thinking about, you know, sustainability. And then, of course, now with delivery being so important to all of these businesses, you've got big platforms like Uber Eats. So I feel like this one, I'm pretty excited for because it kind of touches on three pretty, you know, normally, like, I don't think these folks would like at a conference be all the up there on stage talking together, you know, like they'd be at like the restaurant conference, they'd be at the sustainability conference, but we kind of got them all, you know, talking synergistically. Yeah. Yeah. It's the the curb and everything that moves on the curb and is eaten on the curb. It's so intertwined and that's, that's why curb was so fun, I think. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I think speaking of food, you know, we'll have a couple cool, we'll have one more, one other kind of food focused panel with a couple chefs. And, uh, you know, I I think the other couple panels that, you know, I like, and maybe we won't go into all the details of them, but I know that like topic and category wise, we've got a panel on the fleet of the future. You know, I'm excited to bring uh, Starship and Waymo to the conference this year. So we're going to hear from them up on stage. You know, I think Waymo, especially, well, I, I think the two reasons why I like them is because for some reason, delivery robots are always popular at our event, right? Like we have all the companies, all the vehicles, and every year people are taking pictures. And, you know, so that, you know, we'll kind of keep that theme running. And then with AVs, you know, like Waymo is actually out there giving rides in Los Angeles now without uh, drivers. So it's pretty cool to see them around. And uh, yeah, so I'm kind of excited for those two sort of uh, panels and partners. Yeah, yeah. Autonomy is, you know, Sometimes it feels like it's actually really just around the corner, right? Like you and I, we've both been in a, a Waymo vehicle. You know, there's actual delivery bots roaming the streets of LA and different cities, college campuses all across the country. Yeah. So I think Waymo and Starship are, are really two of the market hey, players what? in that space. Yeah. I have actually never been in a Waymo vehicle. So our conference <laughs> is going to be the first you've, you've time. You've seen a Waymo vehicle. I've seen one many times. <laughs> I know many people that have been in one. You know, I think even you did a, a video for our Rideshare Guy channel about your experience taking a Waymo. And uh, yeah, so I'm actually excited to, you know, sort of hop in one. And I don't know if we'll be doing actual rides, but I think that we will have one scheduled to be on site for part of the day. So that'll be cool. And then, I don't know, I always like the 
you know, sort of whether it's vehicle or, you know, food wise, right? Like we've got a cool chef this year who's going to be participating. He's going to be speaking on a panel. And then I think we're going to be serving up their food, the Tlayudas, you know, for lunchtime, right? So I kind of like that combo experience, experience wise, right? When you're at an event, you know, we'll have an executive from Amos, Waymo speaking on a panel, and then we'll have the actual vehicle there. You'll be in LA, you could maybe try and get a ride, you know, from a Waymo while you're in town. So I always sort of like that double experience part that we try to, you know, try pretty hard at the event yeah, to do. A picture is worth a thousand words. And I'd say like <laughs> a, a bite of, you know, James Beard nominated LA Times 101 best winning food is worth a million words, maybe like, so it's, it's not just the place where you get to hear about, you know, the curb in the street. It's the place where you actually get to experience it. And I think that's kind of the, the charm of the event. So come hungry. Yeah. Well, I guess speaking of food, we always have some cool food vendors. So I don't know if we'll release them all, but uh, I know we'll have a couple of the classics, right? I think that I did already mention our fruit cart guy who is always popular with the the locals. If you live in LA, you know, just see the fruit carts everywhere. So I think that element is cool. And I'm, I'm excited for these Tayuda, Tlayudas. Is that how you say it? Well, yeah, it's a, a TL sound. Yeah, Tayuda. Am I butchering it? <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> the you L know, silent? Neither of us uh, are, are native Oaxacans, so it's, <laughs> we're both butchering it. Well, luckily you don't know how to, you don't, you won't need to know how to say it in order to order it. You can uh, just point <laughs> just to point. it, right? <laughs> yeah. Cool. So food wise, we're going to have some good stuff. Partner wise, we're going to have some great stuff. Anything else you want to highlight on panels or programming or anything you're excited for? I mean, I think just as, as always, right, we have this fun blend of public and private sector, right? So we have you know, California state representative, Laura Friedman, who's been a, a real leader on kind of you know, transportation and city issues. Yeah, uh, We've got, yeah, all sorts of, you know, both small emerging startups that are you know, cutting edge and some bigger, interesting companies we've heard from before. We've got, you know, Sam Polk from Every Table, another person doing amazing work, kind of combining food with giving back to the community. So I don't know. I, I think that's just like why the event leaves a smile on people's face, right? You're like you get here and like all of a sudden I get it. Like all these things, yeah. they make sense together. Yeah. And I mean, I think on my end, definitely, you know, there are a couple panels we put together that are a little more focused on workers, on loyalty, gig drivers, you know, and really also to the services that kind of keep yeah. them coming back, keep them happy. So, you know, I know we've got a couple uh, topics around safety and, you know, sort of the financial services. And, you know, it's really just kind of like, I think about it, like getting drivers, keeping them happy, providing them value. And, you know, obviously for me, you know, been kind of covering, uh, you know, gig workers for the past 10 years, always like including again, that element into things. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. We've got a panel here on safety, uh, you know, kind of running your labor force. We've got DoorDash, one of their folks that'll be speaking on a panel. And then of course, we've also got our, I don't know if it's uh, famous yet, but we will have our delivery driver meetup. I think it's kind of cool. We'll have <laughs> a bunch of delivery drivers on site. And I think this year I've confirmed four or five quite big Ubers in the community. So Luis from Delivery TV, our own Sergio Avedian from the Rideshare Guy, who's uh, pretty well known, and then uh, a couple others that are going to be coming. So I think that's kind of cool. Again, you know, we'll have a little bit of a meetup for delivery drivers on site. I think last year we had 50 to 70 on site. And, uh, you know, we had quite a few executives kind of in there mixing it up with them and learning and talking and, you know, so sort of combining those elements, I think will definitely be a fun time. Yeah. And I think combined, we've got yeah, a few hundred thousand in like, you know, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram followers for the the rideshare media world that's going to be in present right yeah definitely uh, i think but we've but got yeah to, to your point like there there is no delivery economy without the delivery labor force and so i think keeping them so centered in the conversation i think i think that's important yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, I don't want to go on uh, forever uh, hyping up our own event, but I feel like we did a pretty good <laughs> job teasing, touching on things, and also uh, previewing things. Anything else uh, you want to mention before we uh, sign off here? It's really excited to see everyone uh, come out end of March, uh, you know, meet some cool people, try some cool food, see some cool technology, and uh, shake some hands. Yeah, definitely. No, lots of good people, good partners, and uh, hopefully good weather good venue this year. So I think there'll be a lot uh, going on March 28th. So uh, Thursday, March 28th and Friday, March 29th. You can get tickets at curbivore.co and I'm sure we can leave a little link 
for a ticket code in the show notes too. If we want to give our listeners, anyone who just sat here and listened to us for 20, 30 minutes, we got to give them a little something, right? That's, that's worth a few bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a few bucks off the ticket. So we'll put a little uh, something for you in the show notes there. All right, Jonah, look forward to seeing you at the event. See everyone soon.